and welcome back to the wonderful Strike Cars Mission Briefing, your weekly Wednesday, for it is Wednesday, they're not filming it on Wednesday, but you know, time travel, dose of Star Trek goodness from any ship, side cannon, main cannon, semi-main cannon, JJ cannon, everything in between, look at the ship, discuss it, theorise, ask you guys what you know, what you think, and even if you design the ship, because we do get a lot of the designers of these cool ships coming and saying, hey guys, great, look at review and such, so, Stuart, what are we doing today? Because I do not know. And how you doing? <laughs> Just I'm, doing at you now. I'm, I'm doing fairly well. How are you, Commander? I'm fine. A bit warm here, which is weird for England. It's warm here, too. <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, yes, today we are looking at a ship by Richard Long. This is actually a reimagined uh, Klingon Katinga. Um, so probably, like, I would say the Lost Era, somewhere around the Ooh. Enterprise C era, I would imagine. Uh, which is kind of neat. So let's just d d dive right into the first picture. Now, should be said, this is a physical model. Um, so I think he's done a fantastic job on this thing. So there it is in all of its beautiful glory. Now, what do you think? First, first impression there. It looks post Star Trek. It looks Nemesis era. It looks like it fit in very well with sort of a. a, a more advanced design bureau style with you know the negvar like you know we've taken these styles but progressed it slightly further uh, in a smaller ship takes away the some of the structural issues and also has a thor's hammery feel those sorts of shapes but it, it somehow simplified it all down yeah. and yet made it a bit more advanced so this is almost a better tos one if you slimmed if you slimmed down even further i would say maybe yeah um, I gotta disagree with you on the Nemesis era, though. This looks more like a step between the Katingas from the motion picture and, uh, like, like, as you said, the Negvar or the Vorcha. I think it's that progression towards that that look, in my opinion. All right, well, I see that as well. I, yeah, depends if they're continuing the Katinga line specifically. Yeah, especially uh, the color palette and the the plating is very much like the Negvar and the the Vorcha. Yeah. Uh, well, we're still maintaining, especially that back part is very similar to just the regular Katinga. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. first of all, one of the things I really like is the head of this ship, the big, mm. big, wide, wide windows at the front. Mm. I can just picture like a, I, I don't know if that would be a galley there necessarily, but maybe like a uh, observation lounge of some sorts. Y you know, they're Klingons, so what do you expect? Maybe that's a targ pit. Maybe they got well, good it, lights, good lighting well, for the targ pit. Ten forward is now, you know, targ forward. Where you have your target pit, or as you say, drink forward, or just back left forward. You know, but you can imagine though that you know, the captains, are, captains are just a couple of decks above, and here you are doing back left training. How exhilarating, how exhilarating would that be to be the Dahar master, and you're fighting a back left in the middle of a battle, like mm. ships firing, fighting another ship, and you know, yeah, it's fine, they're weak. So we'll just, just back left training in the middle, and just look at the destruction. No, just, just beam the the enemy commanders over once their shields are up. Beam the captains over and fight them. In, yep. in front of their in front of the window there. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. That's the way to go. Dedicated humiliation room. The, the humiliation room. I never thought I'd hear that, but okay. That, Dedicated one. It's not just Wesley's quarters. <laughs> oh, good, good. Um, so one of the things that really stands out to me is, as well as is this bridge module on the top, which mm. I would assume the red light is the bridge, the main mm. bridge section because we you know on the katingas and the d7s they got the raised and mm -hmm. the bridges at the top with a kind of a red light now is that a window do you think do you think that's a window or a view screen well this would be a, i mean we've seen we've seen that we've sort of seen the jj abrams version sort of so this would be the iteration from that i mean it would fit the jj verse quite nicely with how sleek it is have the window that's key, that's consistent um it's not ideal but i mean at the same token the grills at the back of the, you know, uh, and we know they're sort of that's the Bassard port-ish. Mm. So why would the why couldn't the front be some sort of sensor? Why couldn't that be deflector? Just have a red deflector. Hmm. Front really deflector. Yeah. Yeah. Never thought about that. It's almost more of a stretch to have it be a window, especially if it's yeah. red. I mean, I know obviously Klingons have red internal rooms, but I don't know. Hmm. Never really thought about that. Um. <laughs> I do like the I do like the bulked up neck. It's, it seems like much more of a structural strong point now as opposed to like mm. a weak spot. Uh, so that that leading back into that is very very well done. And again, that's what really speaks. That what really shows me the, the the time period. I think it's a step between moving into that new style that the Klingons have actually adopted. So it's true. Yeah, 
I just thought that obviously we don't see any evolved Katingas the entire you know lifespan of the show beyond six. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. so that's why I was thinking this. You know, they, they they're so fine with the design. They are sort of I guess skip straight to the the Vorchar, but this makes sense. Like a let's redesign. But yeah, in terms of a midway, maybe, you know, maybe if this was an increased size ship, you know, maybe they upped it by thirty percent mm. scale. Um, as you know, the in between because like I said, the, the the head. I mean, to be fair, this head actually looks very similar to the one of the non. Uh, like the 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 other Vorcha heads pieces that was not picked, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, so I mean again this could be that, you know we're gonna take this basic Ting design that we've used for potentially two hundred years if you take Enterprise as current, um, and you know we're gonna make it bigger and more robust than the next version they said because I mean the the, the Vorcha has again a very similar back I mean if you look at the back it's almost identical, bar the power, you know uh, impulse deck thing. Um, mm. So yeah, I mean, I could see. It. I don't think it was a Katinga upgrade, more as a, a a ship in between. The Klingons aren't very imaginative with their designs. They don't they don't really go away from a set aesthetics. This could be the one point five because yeah. Katingas are very actually smaller than you know Connie. So maybe this is the one in between. This is the lost era yeah. designed to go against the B, and then suddenly the C comes out. Like God damn it, we're small again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. As for the upsizing of this, I'm not 100% sure about that, um, no. just because of the window sizing. It but it would make like more sense for a deflector, though, and then just the windows are just yeah. huge bay windows. So moving to the next picture, this is a shot of it from the side. And hmm. here you can see quite a few more differences that are very, hmm. very interesting. Um, hmm. First of all, the, the impulse deck has, it's not, it's more of a less degree of an angle. Uh, it's not as, as abrupt as it was on the on the Katinga, um, which is something you didn't you wouldn't notice from the front at all. Mm. But even the whole impulse deck, I think, slants down by the looks of it, mm. as opposed to being straight across. Um, <clears throat> so, what do you think those things are on the wings there? Then you think those are weapons of some sort? Look like bolters almost. Yeah, they've kind of got to be. I mean, you think about what well, if it is lost era, the Klingons have seen. You know, Federation tech for the last. I mean, it was TMP into into the Enterprise B. They use phase ball turrets, then they skip to C. Mm-hmm. But if this is between. Then maybe they think, hey, let's add disruptor ball turrets. Yep. That's you know, we're, gonna suggest. we're very much weak in most of our angles. <laughs> so let's do something effective again. Well, I will say, um, this is a beautiful model. Um, a little bit not as much detail as I thought on the front of those engines, but apart from that, really nicely done model. And looks, you know, doesn't look kit bashy, which is really great. It looks like either a scratch mm. build or a lot of custom. He did a really great job on this, so well done. I want to say mm. his name was sorry again. Yeah, his name's Richard Long that did this. Um, built it and had it for sale. I saw it on a site, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I gotta get pictures of that and yeah. talk about that because it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, um, I should try contacting him because I'd love to hear his design process well, and thought process behind I mean, this. So. What's great is this is such a simple model. Conceptually, that a Trek Cards original would not be a difficult ship to make in 3D. And I'm mm. sure I'd love to. I mean, Stuart, we should have to do that. I mean, I'd love to make a full episode of this, have this fly yeah. and shoot against the sea, because that could be really interesting, like dynamic. Um, that, you know, the terror bird of the. the terror bird is a <laughs> Romulan's evolution. This is yeah. their evolution. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one, one thing I had to say about the head, though, I mean, it seems to have lost a lot of deck space. I mean, before they had the, the two modules on the top there, the one like mm. the tower, and the other one was kind of like a an oval-shaped thing. Mm. Um, it's They seem to have lost quite a bit of space in that forward module. Now, if they upscaled the size, mm. they could have quite a few decks in there, but judging by those windows, there's not that many. Um, I would say maybe four or five decks mm. at the most mm-hmm. in that head. Um, so... But I think oh. I think they I think they gain room in the neck for sure. Oh yeah, um, I mean the neck is just one corridor yeah. basically. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, this is what reminds me. I mean, this is a great melding of different styles of the Klingon aesthetic. One thing I like about the front bit is if you can visualize in your head, take out the neg uh, the Katinga. But you actually have to look at that. Actually, actually look at that. Um, the, take out the <laughs> the Katinga elements and give it more of a dip like a beak. The front bit would look like a bird of prey. With how the detailing is on the top and those sort of curves, I mean, it would be much more better prey. So I can imagine they've, you know, shrunk down the details to be much more. This is the command deck, you know. There's no bullshit. There's no extra gunnery. It's just like this is the. You know, rather than having all these eight people with gunnery chairs, it's like no. This is you've got computers for that, and you've got people. You know, much more condensed, um, mm. and also less less targetable, I guess maybe. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah. the bridge is always a sore spot, given that any bridge is any is easy to hit, but maybe if it's all compressed. Also, one thing I, I quite dig is that if you look just in front of the well, in front of the facade, you can see a great little point, which a I think yeah, as a simple shape, it's great. But if you look as it goes uh, in front of that, you can see these little grooves, and each one you can yeah. see sort of piping in, which feels because a little more real feel because it's clear it's just armor. You pull that mm. out, there's just the pipes, there's just the walkways, there's just you know. It's just armor on top, and it gives this really nice little 3D feel. Um, but also, thought you know they've added armor. It's even more, mm-hmm. you know, they've got, it looks pretty pretty thick armor as well for, for you know in comparison to like a blade of and stuff, which is very thin. It looks pretty good. Yeah, and I think to that point, uh, right in front of the uh, impulse or the uh, bizarre collector thing, there very much is the natural separation plane. If we're gonna have a boom separation, sure. Um, yeah, I can okay. see it quite, being quite beefy, much beefier than the the D seven and stuff, which in Starfleet Battles does have boom separation. So, um, mm. yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing that really stands out to me in this is the engines, the, the the changes he's made to the engines. He's bulked them out quite a bit in the rear, and mm. slimmed them down in the front, which I like. It doesn't look like it has disruptors on it, uh, like the D seven would. Um, so I don't know if there's still disruptors there might be on the bottom there looks like there's well there, w- there was never visible disruptor ports no. so but there was there was that extra plating or thickness added to the front of the d7 and the katinga which was where everything fired from so there's something there i guess but <laughs> seems to be gone here i would assume there still is and if not it could be in that uh connection joint between the sort mm. of a little bit than uh, wing and a little bit. I will say that back part though is a nice progression of the Kronos one because that has this little chunk, a little, a little bump out of the back. It's just more of an, a, a full on version of that, which I quite like. And obviously the the Vortra has a lot of different, you know, steps and such in the engine. So there is some sort of in between there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like they've still got the inner grill light. I think these ships should have inner grill lights. I think it really sort of sets yeah. them off. I do like that. I do like. I do like when the outer grills is glow as well. But at the same time, I mean, the Enterprise didn't have that. The other grills didn't glow. Well, that's it's the thing. The inner, yeah. It's a TMP, late TMP era design. It only yeah. the grill lights. They're learning just slowly from the Federation. <laughs> Our spies finally get this technology. And they're like, dude, we're at the Enterprise B now. Damn it. Yeah. All right, so let's go to the next picture. And that's a shot of it from the rear. Now, Ooh. I'm really, I really dig the placement of those impulse engines uh, where they are on the wings and the size of them. Size look- is really good. They look pretty beefy, yeah. and I love the hex- hexagonal pattern he's got in there yeah. as well to add some detailing. Really well done. This is obviously the most normal Katinga view. Yeah. Um, it, it is almost identical if it, you know, with everything just slightly out of proportion. Although the amount of bump there is at the bottom, because the Katinga is flat. Big extra bump. I don't know if that's just to mount it to a thing or whatever, um, but it does change it. It makes it look obviously, obviously bulkier, although I think each of the details there should be a bit smaller. Given the scale of the ship, the very very large, you know, housings. They, they, unless they're like shuttle doors or shuttle doors or something. Um, speaking of that bottom bit, should be the shuttle bay. Or yeah, I was just going to say I don't see any visible shuttle bay doors on this thing, um, and that would be a perfect spot for them. Yeah. Although, as as I mentioned earlier, they are losing a few decks and things in the head of the ship or the top hat, as they call it on the Klingon yeah. ships, um, which looks like they've made up for either in the neck and as well maybe back there underneath. I but do like that though. I do like that additional bulk on the bottom. Oh, why have I ever thought of that? Just adding that bulk to the bottom and boom, you got a shuttle bay. Just a shuttle hanger at the bottom. Just slap it right on. Mm-hmm. It is obvious. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, and here too, you can see those turrets on the wings. Uh, they're very prominent from the back. Mm-hmm. Like they stick out quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. More than I mm-hmm. thought they did from the side, to be honest. Must be beefy. Yeah. Uh, next picture is a shot of it from the bottom. Hmm. Hmm. And again, there's some interesting details here. Uh, those little round things, we've speculated before, like on the Katinga, uh, yep. there's usually a bigger one that has the Klingon symbol yep. on it, which we talked to Rob Bonchun about and thought maybe warp core ejection mm-hmm. ports. I mean, this could have dual warp core capabilities. I mean, that'd be kind of neat, actually, a redundancy just in case. Mm-hmm. Time together and they have well better speed, but you lose they, one and you still have warp, but lower speed. Well, they've or, or they've gone the processor route. You know they can't improve the single warp core, so they have to go dual core. Aha, <laughs> aha! Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm serious. I'm not joking. Core it's, warp drive. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we see we see the eight core for the Jedi Prize. 
or 16 core. So That's you know, like a 24 core, yeah. There is precedent. Um, it's great. I love the extra detailing. It, it breaks up the shapes. Mm-hmm. I like how it integrates back into the hull where it bumps again out for the neck. It's like a double sort of wave of bulk and then sim back in and bulk. It's mm-hmm. nice. It, it's not, you know, flat. And obviously it's your, the double uh, more turrets. Yeah. So it's now got a good firing arc. Um, well, yeah. very good firing arc, actually, considering. Mm. Yeah. Um, I still I still can't see anything rep- representative of a shuttle bay door. I mean, there, it looks like there might be like a drop door right in front of the stand on the neck. Almost like a... That'd be interesting. A, a pod launcher thing like on the nx01 i could see that um and even even at the base of the uh <clears throat> the front part of the ship there's a little mm. door almost looks like a little personal hatch for a little shuttle mm. or something speaking of again just nice details at the front could be anything help break yeah. up the shapes yeah I, yeah. Lo- I love the window ring i think that's cool on the bottom there yeah the it's it. it's unusual the klingon's not known for their looking out into space but to have these full-on, maybe that's the, you know, uh, how much more symbolic is it to dine with the enemies on top of your primary weapon? Mm-hmm. While you point it at the ship you're dining with, you know, the captain of that ship comes in and if and if you piss him off, there's one button in the commander's seat at dinner where it fires a torpedo and you can feel it launch and, the, you know, it's like, well, this was a shit meal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It looks great, so, though. It, it, yeah. It's just a sleeked out but it there's little details that don't necessarily mean anything come together to create something that feels thought out Mm -hmm. which is what a ship should be because guess what it's a ship that flies through space has a lot of thought behind that guys has a lot of thought Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, the next shot is a picture of it from the top this one's got the lights off Um, there's nothing really too much new to glean from this shot but I thought I'd include it because with the light off Lights off, you kind of get a different feel. You can see this mm. a little bit more detail, especially in mm. the head section there. Mm. Lots of color variation, but not too much. Yeah, I, l- I love the I, l- I love the the greens that they've yep. used, yep. and no reds. Like I like no. the reds on Klingon ships, but I kind of like this look a little bit better. Yeah, it, it's it's a very sort of light Vorchar green, like very very light. It's not it's not a classical green for Klingons. Yeah, it's nice. More of a Romulan design. Hmm. I'll just I'll, I'll leave yep. it at that. <laughs> um, next shot has a shot of it from the front and the back, and we get to see the front detail. And again, there's not one big window, I guess. I guess it's a bunch of little windows uh, by the looks of it at the front there. I mean, it really, though, you know, I mean, the, the D7 in the 1960s were just pieces of wood. There was nothing to it. Then they also added things later on, but... This ship, with all these extra lit elements, really does make it come alive. Seeing the front of launcher, seeing those windows, I mean, it's not mm. very conventionally Klingon, and really, to need that much, you know, space in your torpedo launcher to have, you know, all these extra windows, but, hey, uh, it looks great as a, as a concept. I mean, if, if this was, you know, a flagship, mm. ironically, this could be the di- diplomacy ship. You know, the ship designed to be less aggressive, hence the sleeker profile, and the windows show, we're not all just going to shoot you. We have the gun. You can see it. But we're not here for war. We're here for viewing things. <laughs> Come out to our conference room. There's a big table and a big window in the front. And you can just hang out and look oh, at your planet and your ship. Underneath the, the table's glass, underneath it is a torpedo just sat in the tube waiting. <laughs> so it's there ready. You can see it primed. If you oh, wouldn't down. that be cool? Under a meatloaf. Just there's a torpedo. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? You know how they've yeah. got the torpedo launcher in the front? Oh, God. If the f- deck right above it had a glass floor so you could yep. see the torpedoes being loaded and boom. Oh, that'd be re- really amazing, actually. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, <laughs> um, um, yeah great. Although I, I don't think I like how the nacelles are... <sighs> go in. They don't... Mm, doesn't... The f- yeah, the need front, more detail, at least. Yeah, the front of the nacelles kind of lose it for me a little bit. Uh, from some of these angles, but uh, I do like that they're kind of they seem more straight than the the D seven, which is kind of cantered in a little. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of like the straight look. The, mm. the cantered in ones always kind of bothered me as a kid. I just didn't think it looked quite right. I mean, they've grown on me, of course, over the years, and it kind of makes the shape unique. But I like them kind of straight down. I think it looks really yeah. good. So I I I like both, but this view certainly looks good. 
Yeah, and I think there is a little bit of an inward canter there, but not too much. Not as pronounced yeah. as the D7. So, all right, and so that's all the pictures. So hopefully you enjoyed that. I mean, I saw this and I thought, wow, that's a cool looking ship. I had to snag pictures of it and had to at least talk about it and show you guys in case you hadn't seen it. So, um, and uh, hopefully you liked it, Samuel, because I know you like you like new designs. So. I do, yeah. I have seen this one before, and I did clock it as a, ooh, that's cool, but I, I couldn't find it again once I once I didn't save it. So that's I why I grabbed I, it as soon as I saw yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. I mean, I think, I you know, it's a design that could fit into multiple time periods, or even the JJ-verse, but it would work in a good way in each of them. Well, that's a hell of an impressive thing to be able to make it potentially fit in three different time zones. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, with the Klingons, it's hard to tell, because they use their designs forever, too, so there's that ambubig... An, anub, I can't even say it. Ambiguity. The audience knows what you're saying, Stuart, and they commend you Am- for trying. Ambiguity. Anyway, yes. Sorry, I just, I can't, I can't today. I can't talk today. I guess. Canadian. Yes, it's the heat. It's, it's killing And me the snow here. at the same time. Land of contradictions, I'm telling you. Anyway, uh, so yeah, it's a great ship and could fit in multiple eras very easily. I mean, I, I could see this post nemesis, as you said, uh, but I can also definitely, I think this is more the lost era. I could see this facing off against a, an ambassador class. Well, to be fair, if it did, it would still be a nemesis era when they use their ships. So this would be, you know, used into the 20. You know, this would fight the J at some point, if they use that long because they use their ships for so long. <laughs> the Battle of Praxia. Praxion. Procyon. Procyon. Well, hey, they use Vore Charles then, so... Then, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Not far off. So anyway, I uh, hope you guys liked it. I, I really enjoyed seeing it, and uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind one for my own collection, to be honest, because it's really full yeah. design. Well, let's let's get in contact. Let's get a 3D model built for Dracula's original, and let's make it fly, honestly. So Richard Long, if you're watching this, or if you know Richard Long, who designed it, let him know that we looked at it. And we'll definitely have him on the show. I'd love to have a designing episode mm-hmm. with him talking about his thought process and exactly what's going on. I'd love Abs- to see a deck plan for this thing, too. Absolutely. Nice. So anyways, that's it, guys. Um, please, if you like the episode, hit the like button. If you like the ship, hit the like button. Just hit the like button if you like us. Why not? And if you like us, hit subscribe because you don't want to miss us. They don't like it that much. Yeah. Subscribe. Uh-oh. Oh. Subscribe to the craziness and apparently insults. <laughs> but if you want to help this show directly, there are two amazing ways. Either, well, a couple of ways, but these are the ones that really, really help us out. Either Patreon, which is a monthly donation service. You get a little bit each month, like a Netflix or a Hulu, or even just a cup of coffee. You know, skip that one cup of coffee. Go on a diet, get one cup of coffee, and give it to Trade Cards instead for more great content. Or TradeCards.com, go and find that big donate button and say, hey, here's 20 bucks. And we'll say thank you, sir. And you'll see great more episodes. Please, sir, may I have another? Yes. Absolutely. And don't forget, if you can't f- donate financially, please share the video around. Tell the Klingon groups you may know. If you're part of a Klingon assault force or some kind of Klingon As cosplay many of you are. Facebook group, just share it around um, because a lot of Klingon fans out there. Mm-hmm. And with the upcoming Discovery, you know, the Klingons might have taken a hit. So we're trying to represent and give them something that they might really appreciate, those fans. So just saying. Anyway, until next time, guys, I'm Captain Foley. And I am Commander Coffins. <laughs> we'll see you in the future. Bye, guys. Or the, or Bye. The, or the Lost Era, maybe. Ooh, yes. Which is Bye, the guys. future.